Timothy. And by the way, he's already told Timothy, fan that thing into flame, Timothy. You've grown cold. He's already told, now he says, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. The word for strong is a compound word, and the first part of it is the Greek major preposition. It means at, in, about, above, uh, beyond. And it's, it is conjoined with dunamai, dunamis, is that word that appears in Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power, it's the dynamite. English word dynamite has its origin in this. So what Paul is telling Timothy is, Timothy, I want you to be in, to be at, to be about, to be on, what? The power that comes from grace. That's where your strength comes, Timothy. Issues of truth and doctrine must be held up and echoed loudly, but the place or the state of the believer's strength is not in holding correct doctrine, but in abiding in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. My strength doesn't come from what I know. My strength doesn't come from the truth I comprehend. My strength comes from standing in the grace of Christ Jesus. Truth is what we proclaim. Grace is the place of strength from which we proclaim it. Terrible things have been wrought on our world by folks who saw themselves as guardians of God's truth, but who were not in a place of grace as they upheld it. Think about history. The things that we read that were done in the name of Christianity, some of those things were so oblivious to standing in the grace and being strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Things have been done in the name of truth that could never be done in the name of God's grace. Grace must be the place of strength for a safe church. It's not always about how right we get things, but watch this. It is always about where we stand when we get things right. It's not always about how right I am, but it is always about where I'm standing when I'm right. And where does Paul tell Timothy he needs to be standing? In the grace that is in Christ Jesus. You are strong in that grace. What does standing in the grace of Jesus, why does standing in the grace of Jesus help the church be a safe place? Because it creates an environment free from guilt. Uh, Drew could not have read a better story than what he did this morning because it so illustrates what I'm trying to also drive home, and that is that when you and I are in connection with our God, there's not a sticker in this world that can stick to us. All the praise in the world means nothing if we're connected with God, and all of the criticism in the world means nothing if we're connected to God. We have been given opportunity to draw our strength in an environment where there is no guilt. Folks, th this, this is amazing. This is, this is some of the unique character of grace that we have missed because we've allowed other people to be, develop understanding of grace. And we have said, well, you know, if saved, barely saved is more what the Bible says. No, the Bible still says you stand in the you be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Yeah, this would be interesting. How many of you believe that the beginnings of your spirituality were motivated by guilt? How many of us cut our spiritual teeth by guilt? Somebody put us on tight. I was telling somebody the other day there, there was a preacher that uh, someone told me of. He used, to, he used to have a cup of water up on the pulpit all the time and suspecting, you know, that he needed to take a drink once in a while. Well, he actually used it at the end of his lesson. And he would take that cup of water out and he would take this water and he'd fling it out and he'd say, there won't be a drop of water in hell. And 
And there were people who cut their spiritual teeth on guilt. I'm going to wager there's a bunch sitting in here that would say, you know what? It began because of guilt. It began because of guilt. I think guilt has a place. I think especially when it comes to stepping out of self and into Christ, I think guilt is a big motivator. Yet spiritual growth demands that I put away childish things. That's what Paul taught in 1 Corinthians 13. He said, when I became a man, I put away childish things. When we became more spiritually mature, we put away the things that were less mature. And to some degree, guilt is one of those motivators that is less mature. We could also cite 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 2, where Peter says that we should long for the pure milk. Why? Not because it's supposed to be our steady diet, but because by it we grow in respect to salvation. We grow. Not intended to be on milk. Not intended to be immature. Guilt is a strong motivator. But our service will never gain strength in guilt. It won't gain strength. We may have it. We may be able to do it. We may motivate ourselves, but it will not have strength until we do what Paul left on Timothy's answering machine, which was be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. So while guilt may play a, a part of our spirit, in our spiritual development, it was never intended to be the air that a Christian continually inhales. Why? Because guilt offers no strength to sustain the spiritual journey. There's no strength in guilt. There's only burden. Paul told Timothy, I want you to get your strength from the grace of Jesus. A shame-based environment can bring no healing. It can only bring shame. Yet too often, Paul's instructions to stand, to be strong in the grace that is in Christ, is ignored. And believers, rather than live without stars and without dots, choose to live in the cave of guilt. I searched and searched and could not find, <clears throat> but... Um, do you remember how most of, uh, it was probably the B-quality Westerns of years gone by. It seems that almost every Western ended up in a cave, in an old abandoned mine. And then they had a gunfight. You know, there was always a gunfight in the cave. And you could hear the, the, the echo uh, of everything. But it, it seemed like everybody always ended up in a cave. And, and, and let's just liken that to, to the cave of guilt. And, and, and if I live... If I find my strength, which is an oxymoron because it's not there, I've already said that. If I think I find my strength to serve and to be faithful in, in guilt, then I'm living in the cave of guilt. I'm dwelling in the cave of guilt. So I'm there anyhow. And then what happens when something really horrendous goes on, when I really have a biggie, then it's like the cave-in. Remember, there was always a cave-in. The echo of the gunshot set off, and this old rickety mine caved in. And then there's these poor people, cave, you know, they're behind this cave-in. And all these boulders are there. And that's about the time that Lassie takes off running for home. You know, oh, Timmy's cut, stuck in a cave. You know, and gets that all figured. You, you've, you watched all of those. You remember those. The young guys, I've never seen anything like that. The only hope we have, if that's how we are living spiritually, is to begin to dismantle that cave-in. Remember how tedious that task was in those movies? You know, you're running, the oxygen's going low. They'd light a candle to see how much oxygen they had left. You know, and the oxygen, they're, they're cut off from that, and they, they move one boulder at a time, one boulder, and there's people working the other direction. You know, they are just laboring to get out of this cave. They're entombed in this cave of guilt, and that's exactly... That's exactly what it's like when you and I allow ourselves to, to see ourselves spiritually as though we're dwelling 
in the cave of guilt. If our spiritual strength is to live in a cave of guilt and always just accept the burden of guilt, then we just wait for the big cave in to happen. And this, this was the only picture I could find. And, and uh, let's see. I believe that's Faye Dunaway. And I don't remember the guy's name. But there was some movie, apparently, that they were in a cave. So our guilt creates a heart which views our spiritual escape as an even larger and more impossible task than we thought of originally. And if I'm living as guilt, with guilt as my motivator, guilt doesn't have the strength to motivate me to be strong. It only has the ability to make me feel more guilty. Now, I can feel stronger and get out of guilt, but not by dwelling in the cave of guilt. Because, you see, the neat thing is, Jesus provides a whole new opening. Here we, here we are, working to, to labor and to get one rock off, one rock off, one, trying to get out of the cave, and all in the world we have to do is to turn around and look, and there's an opening the other direction. And it's made by Jesus. And he says, you know what? You can get out of the cave. You may have never noticed this before. Come to me, all who weary, who are weary. Literally, that word means who work to exhaustion. If you were going to describe what those people did in the movies trying to get out of that cave in, what did they do? They worked to exhaustion. You know, everyone, it was the last rock that they moved. It had strength and it would move and then they'd pass out and there was enough air coming through and it saved them. Everyone worked to exhaustion. Come to me, all of you who are working yourselves to exhaustion. You are heavy laden by the burden of guilt, and I will give you rest. I'll give you the motivation to be strong, but it won't be because you're guilty. It will be because I've set you free. Take my yoke upon you. And learn from me, for I am gentle and I am humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. That's the opening Jesus makes in the cave of guilt. Very quickly, you know, this is one of the amazing strengths of 12-step program work. Is, and again, people are at different stages in understanding, and, and so I share with you my understanding of this particular uh, truth. People who are stuck in addictive behaviors of any kind are in the cave of guilt. That's where they live. Now, it, it doesn't show itself that way. You know, they're going to they're gonna be belittling, they're going to uh, abuse, they're going to hurt everyone around them. But the reason that that's happening is because they're so disgusted with their inability to get through that behavior themselves that the only way they can feel at the least bit good about me is to make sure that you don't feel so good about you. Now, if you've been on the receiving edge, uh, end of that, you're going to say, no, I don't think so, Dan. I don't think there was any guilt. Well, I disagree. I think people in addictive behaviors live in a constant sense of guilt. 